اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاه والسلام على رسول الله ما بعد I'm here in the middle of this camp it's cold it's windy and you know what why are we doing this why are we building this camp والله we have to look into the eyes of our brothers and sisters we have to look into the eyes of the mother that saw all of her children killed in front of her we have to look into the eyes of the daughter who saw her father dragged away by the regime we have to look into the eyes of the son who saw his mother raped in front of him well like this is the reality my brothers and sisters and you know what the reality is we couldn't stand to defend and support these people in their time of need and what's even more shameful is that this has been going on for 6 or 7 years we look at the numbers we say half a million 1 million i tell you my dear brothers it's much more than that but you know what we like to make things small so we don't feel so bad you know what's even more shameful is the fact that these people that rose to defend these people that try to support their family they left with nothing they here they homeless Allah over the last few days we've had families who've been bringing families into this camp and I feel shy in front of them Allah I feel dirty I feel shy that I can't do much more you know how many times I have to see people cry every single day people come to me crying every single day that people sit outside my office every single day will i have to keep moving home because people keep finding us and i have no no rest and you know what many times i told myself i can't handle this no more it's time to go home your mom might have care nobody cares I want to tell you the story my dear brothers and sisters of the first three families that we brought into this camp. We're building this camp. Why on earth are we building it? One of the families is from Khan Sheikhoun. When you guys saw the chemical attacks take place. Wallahi one of the sisters was telling my wife today she said that when the chemical attack dropped someone told him to put the nappies of their children on their face. and that's what they thought would help them and they put nappies on their face and they they ran they saw their children choking on their own phlegm on their own spit dying because they were being strangled by the sarin gas and they've come here to Idlib to the outskirts and there's no way for them to stay they're homeless Their homes have been destroyed and they're homeless. They're too afraid to go back there because another chemical attack might strike and yet the umma is silent. The next family is a family who was besieged in Damascus in eastern Ghouta in a place called Barze. The brother was a civil defense worker, someone who was going to the front line. digging people out of rubble wallahi we told his story that other day he was digging people out of the rubble he went to dig a 8 year old child a rocket had hit the house and he was digging he just got to the girl and another rocket hit right on top of him he broke his shoulder he broke his chest and hamdulillah his compatriots his friends from the civil de- defense his co-workers they managed to drag him out he survived subhanallah and guess what they've got the video footage the 8 year old girl she survived as well from Allah This brother he comes out they've left all their homes they had to surrender they couldn't be under siege no more they couldn't deal with it no more 6 years 7 years under siege and now they've come to Idlib and they have no way to stay they're homeless Wallahi this brother came to us so many times this week Look what he gave for the ummah and yet he's homeless But alhamdulillah thanks to you now he's living here in this camp. The third sister or the third family sister Siham she was in the spotlight serial video that went viral. You see her crying 1 million people saw this sister cry. 
Don't you feel the pain? A woman that's looking after five orphans. They're not even her children. Three are her sisters. One is her child, one is her brother's child. Her mum was shot in the head by a sniper. And she saw this. And she narrates that when she saw her mum die, her mum raised her finger and said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Wallahi, these people are saved. Maybe we are the ones that are doomed. Her husband was kidnapped. Nobody knows where he is. Three and a half years, four years. No one's even seen him. Nobody even knows what's happened to him. Her brother, after seeing their mother shot in the head by a sniper, he decided to go out and fight and avenge their mother. Killed. Inshallah, a shaheed. Her other brother tried to come from Lebanon to come and help the family and become the breadwinner and take up the responsibility. Missing. Taken by the regime. Her father hit in an explosion, disabled. Only has one leg. And now who is the breadwinner of the family? The one who looks after the family is her 13 year old son. No education. He tries to do what he can to help. She works maybe for 30p, 50p a day. Wallahi, she sits in front of us crying and telling us that she's fasted for two days. Fasted for two days. Asking you guys, don't you care about the Ummah? Don't you care about what happens to the orphans? Wallahi, she narrates and she says, can't you give some of the happiness that you have in the West? Can't you give it to these orphans? Just a little bit, just a little bit. Make them feel like they haven't lost a parent. Make them feel like, you know what, somebody loves them. All the men in her family killed. And you know what, Alhamdulillah, she's here now. How many stories are we going to hear? These are the people that are waiting outside right now. Wallahi. We go, we get called that there's 22 families just arrived from a besieged area, they've run away from the regime. And we go because we hear that they're sleeping under trees. And when we get there, we see sisters sleeping under trees, wallahi. And they start to put their hijabs on and try to cover themselves because they're embarrassed that we've turned up at, at a strange time. Doesn't it burn your heart as a Muslim man that this is happening to your ummah? Where's your conscience? Well, I was reading about Umar bin Khattab and how he would look after the refugees. Where is the Umar bin Khattab of today? I name my son Mu'tasim. Why? Because I wish that he will have just that one attribute of Mu'tasim. Allah says in the Quran, وَأَتَسِمُوا حَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not be divided. When Mu'tasim heard the cry of the woman, he sent out a whole army for her honor. But where are we today, me and you? Where are me and you? We don't even have enough honor to build homes for the people who have stood for this religion, that have stood for this deen. So my dear brothers and sisters, we don't like to beg, but we beg you, for the sake of your brothers and sisters, for the sake of your own akhirah, share this video. Set a fundraising page up if you can't donate. Do something today that's going to help you in your akhirah. Tomorrow you don't want to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Yawm al that I was there when Bilad al-Sham was being massacred and I did nothing. This is more of an opportunity for us than it is for these people. These people are going to Jannah. Where are we? Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayk.